Good afternoon, everyone. Persons are still joining, so we'll give them around two minutes and then we'll begin. Good afternoon, everyone. A special welcome to everyone here coming um, for the fourth day of our photography training session. Thank you all for being here. A special welcome to those coming to us from YouTube. We're very much grateful for your attendance. We're happy that you're here and, we're ho and we hope that you're learning from this experience, learning as much as I am. <laughs> I am your host, Sheree Campbell, from the Faculty of Social Sciences, a social work student. And honestly, by today, I'm not even a host. I'm not even just a host. I'm a makeup artist. I'm a photo editor. And by the end of the day, I'll be a photographer. So I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to be getting that bag. <laughs> So a big up to everyone who has been here from day one. And you know, this is a little ritual. If you have been here from day one, please indicate in the chat, I don't know, um, put an emoji, um, say yes, or you know, something so that I can see you and acknowledge you. Just give you a little big up for everyone who has been here since day one. Okay, so Kareem has been here. Tia Wright has been here. And even if you haven't been from day one, if you started from day two, day three, you can still indicate. But as long as you know you have been here with us, Rajin has been here with us. Ravini, I remember Ravini. Hi. Um, yes, guys. And we really do appreciate you coming out, um, being our loyal supporters. I'm seeing Anthony. Um, being our loyal supporters as we have this initiative, it's really important that we are multifaceted now in these times, in these unprecedented times, we can't really rely on just what we're studying. We have to, like our presenter, be able to have our feet in different areas. So it's very important for us to make the most out of this opportunity. So guys, I'm looking forward to seeing all the pictures, all the makeup looks that you have been taking, um, you know, since you've been a part of this program since Monday. So guys, please ensure to follow us on all our social media pages, um, UA, PCC, commuters, UA commuters, and we'll have the rest of them tagged in the chat over on YouTube and on Zoom here. So you guys can follow us and tag us when you take your pictures so that we know that you really did learn from this experience. And also ensure to follow our presenter. His uh, social media handles will also be in the chat for you guys. So day one, 
we had a course on photography, right? And this was presented by Kiva Desno. So he taught us how to take quality pictures on our phones. Day two, we had a whole three-year course in just two hours by Alia Rose Tate. And she taught us how to edit quality pictures using Adobe Lightroom. Day three, which was yesterday, we had a complete beauty college experience in around two and a half hours on how to apply, properly apply makeup. Guys, I never knew it was such a precise process. <laughs> And that was by Nikkei Allen. So today we'll be having Demar Brown present to us on how to take professional pictures, um, giving us tips and tricks and all those fancy things that we need to know in order to be to become professional photographers are just for us to better our skills are just for some persons who just want to better or be better their skills. So guys, Imagine five UAs, many regions, but one common goal, connecting all campuses through photography. So I take this opportunity to introduce to you our guest speaker who will be teaching us all about professional photography. So Demar Brown is a UA alumnus holding a Bachelor's of Science in Nursing degree. Demar discovered his love for graphic design towards the latter part of high school and was first introduced to photography in 2013. Whilst at UA, he, sat, he set aside his graphic design habits after becoming one of the best graphic designers on Mona campus. In his leisure time, Demar loves taking photos and editing photos. He has parlayed this interest into an entrepreneurial venture as he is the CEO of DB Photography, founded, on, founded in September 2017. Though photography is more of a hobby and not his profession, he finds joy in the work he produces, especially when comparing early photos to recent ones. Damar. Come and light up this virtual stage, please. And guys, please, you know, send your clapping emojis, your whoop whoops in the chat so this can be live, active, interactive, please. All right. Thank you, Sherry. I really appreciate that. And I must no say, I thank the commuters, PCC, for having this wonderful session connecting five UA through photography. Right, exactly. it's really mind blowing. I really appreciate it, and thank you for having me today. It speaks volume, you understand? Definitely. So, <laughs> all right, so today I'll be presenting on Adobe Lightroom and also photography. I'll sort of start off with photography, right? Um, I hope that everyone um, did get the link that I shared. Um, it has in a PowerPoint that I'm also going to go through and also four images that we are going to practice on. So persons, please get your laptop. Well, you have your laptop out, but open up Lightroom so that when you get to that session, um, we can start editing together, right? And also, please, I want this to be an interactive session. So yes, I have points where I'm going to ask any questions and stuff, but if you have questions um, at any point in time, please feel free to ask because in photography, every day you learn something new. I learn from you, you learn from me. I know what it felt like to say, I don't know what it is to have a camera. How am I going to get my first camera and stuff like that. So persons just please ask me any question if i don't know the answer i will get back to you maybe at a later date or a later time sorry so yeah i'm going to go ahead now and present my screen i'm going to turn off my video camera so let's enjoy all right All right, 
So is everyone seeing my screen? Yes, we are. All right, nice. So we are going to start off with photography. Just before, would someone want to turn on their mics and tell me what they think photography is or what it means to them? Hi, good afternoon. Um, so photography to me is, I mean, I don't think to sound um, philosophical or anything, but to me, it's like just art captured in the moment, you know, it's, it's the beauty of just capturing the moment and expressing it in its rawest, most beautiful um, form. So that's what it is to me. All right, that's good, that's good. Thank you, Karim, I believe. All right, so you are indeed right when you say photography is an art, you know, an art of capturing still images. But can I tell you that photography is also science? Would you believe? All right, so let's go. All right, so what is photography? So the word photo, it means light. So photography refers to the process or practice of creating a photograph. Now a photograph is an image produced by the action of light on a light sensitive material. So a light sensitive material, example, a film, all right? So in essence, Photography is turning light into image. Sorry. So when talking about photography, we already mentioned that photography is light. Light is very crucial in photography, right? So as you can see, as a photographer, yes, you will have a subject, if there's no light, there can't be photography, right? So if we have a subject and there's light in here, you see light in here, what comes to mind that stimulates the visual cortex, right? Is the photographer visualizing the shot that he wants to capture, right? And after you visualize the shot, that you want, you get your phone out, you get your camera, and then you move on to composition. So composition, it basically you framing the image, right? So composition is really, really, really important and it make life easier when even going to edit a photo, right? So, if you, if you have a well composed shot, an advantage of that, it can be less cropping, less pixelated photo and so forth. If you have a poor composed shot, you will have a lot of um, cropping to do. You will, you will have a lot of more editing to get done right because a lot of distracting backgrounds will be there and so forth all right so just remember three important things lighting visualization and the composition anytime you are taking a photograph moving on so there are three elements of exposure now myself as a photographer i'm still learning the art of these three elements, right? Yes, I have mastered it in some cases, but when you move off from a different level to like off flush photography and stuff like that, um, it's a bit more technical, but I want someone to, you know, just tell me the three elements of exposure. Um, again, 
Are you talking about like ISO exposure and shutter speed or is that or something else? You're correct, Karim. You can continue. Oh, isn't that the three ISO shutter speed and exposure? All right. So your I was looking for a different word from the exposure. It's actually aperture, right? So ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. Those three work hand in hand. All right, so the first one we are going to speak about is the ISO. So it controls the sensitivity of your camera's sensor to light. The lower the ISO, the less your sensor is to light, thus less light needed. Less light equals darker images. The higher the ISO sensor becomes sensitive to light, more light equal lit image. Now too high ISO becomes noisy. So as we can see right here, we have a photograph that was, I believe, taken at ISO 200. So as you can see, it's a clearer image and it's a bit darker if you realize. But on the right hand side, we have the ISO 3200. Now, as you can see here, too high ISO becomes noisy. So you can see there's a whole lot of grains right here. Now this will actually throw the photo off unless you're going for the desired effect, right? But usually ISO 100 is usually used at daytime, daylight, right? And uh, a comfortable region if you know your camera and you know the sweet spot of a camera because every camera has their own sweet spot. ISO 200 to 400, usually in low light, can give a superb clear image. All right, so the next element, and please, if I'm going too fast, you should let me know. And someone please indicate me because I can't maneuver the chat. All right, so carrying on. So shutter speed. So shutter speed, control the duration of how much light is allowed to reach the sensor and subject movement. So higher shutter speed freezes the object while lower shutter speed would show some amount of blur. All right, so as you can see right here, this photo was taken with a 1 250 shutter speed. So now, as you can see, you can see the photograph is actually frozen, right? It looks very frozen and it's crispy clear. So that is what happens when you have a high shutter speed, All right? Now, if you have a low shutter speed, which is indicated by the one over four, you can see like, it's like it's still running in the image, if you get what I mean, but it shows some amount of blur, as it said, and it gives a more soft effect. All right, so right here, you see the F 2.8, we call it F stop and F 22. This is actually the aperture, which we are going to look at next. As I said, everything works hand in hand. All right, so I'm going to get back to this image, by the way. Um, I have a question. Um... Could you explain what is meant by one over 200? Because I always see it and I get the whole concept of high and lower uh, shutter speeds, but I don't understand why it's always like, why is it a one over 200? Like, what's the, what, what does that mean? 
All right. So the one over two fifty. This this basically signifies how fast the shutter in your camera is. Right. So if it's one two fifty, you know it's very fast. Right. However, as opposed to one over four, that will be slow. So the higher the the higher the number, that means the image will be frozen. The lower the number is the slower the shutter speed. That's okay. Yeah, that's 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 good. Thank you. All right. So moving on, as I said, we're going to come back to see how we tie in this. Oh, and by the way, I just want to emphasize. So the higher the shutter speed, the less light that will actually enter the camera. As it said, shutter speed controls the duration of how much light is allowed. So if the shutters close at a faster time, it basically means not much light enters the camera. However, if it, if it closes at a slower shutter speed, more light is actually going to enter the camera, right? So moving on. All right, so aperture. So aperture controls the amount of light that enters the camera. The lower the aperture, the wider the opening of the lens to light. Example, f, f4, 1.4, um, f1.8. In this image right here, you see actually f4, right? Um, while the higher the aperture, the smaller the opening of the lens. That would be an example with f14, f20. I believe that this photo was actually f11. I'm sorry for the design of the slide. It cut it out. But for this, photo, for this lens right here, it would be smaller, right? Just be a little dot. All right, so the wider the opening, this means the depth of field will be shallow. Therefore, once you focus on one object, the background is then blurred. So if you have a low aperture and you focus on an object, it will then blur the background as you see right here, around here. The photographer, the photographer, sorry, was focusing on the plant, right? But if you should capture an image with a high f-stop value, such as f14, f20, you will capture the subject, but also there be less blur, so you can get some of the plant or more of the area in. Understood? Yeah, we're following. All right. So as I said before, I'm going to go back to the image before, right? So in this image, we have the f-stop. And you also have the shutter speed also here. So if you have a, sh a fast shutter speed, which is one to 50, that means less light will actually enter the camera. Now to compensate for that less light, you have to, you have to turn down the aperture to a low value, 2.8, that allows more light to come into the camera. So with that being said, you can get a 
frozen image, which is well lit. Right? No. For a this question from a viewer says sure. what's a good aperture to use for a video? Um for a video, I would say, well, it also depends on the field of depth that you would want. Um, for a video, I would say a safe number would be around 11. If, if it's like one person you're going to video, I think a safer number would be lower. Um, that would be about four or five. But a safe enough number for me would be 11. I'm not an expert in videography. I actually have someone else on my team that um, does the videoing for me, but a safe number would be 11. Can't go wrong with that. Okay, thank you. Sure, no problem. All right, so moving on to this image now on the right. So right here, you have a slow shutter speed, one over four. So this means a lot of light will be entering, entering the camera. Now to compensate for that light, that amount of light, you want to turn up the f-stop value, which is the aperture. And here the person turned it to 22. So this will like block out in a sense, some amount of the light. So you can get a clear image, but with the blur effect. All right, so moving on, just going to show your image. All right, so this is what we discussed right here. Exposure triangle. So the aperture, the shutter speed, ISO, you have to learn it, especially when you're going to professional photography and you're going to use the camera on manual mode. I don't use automatic and stuff like that. You have priority mode, aperture as a priority and stuff like that, but a real photographer, he actually uses manual mode, right? So as you can see, the aperture, right? Now for the depth of field, that we spoke about earlier, a higher f-stop value would give a deep depth of field, while a lower f-stop number would give a shallow. So this would have more blur of the background after focusing on the subject, and this will capture everything as the focus, basically. And remember, this is less light, all right? And f-stop, no, sorry, sorry, my bad. More light, less light. Now for the shutter speed, the faster the shutter speed, depending on the limit of the camera, you have cameras that go up to, let's say, 6,400 and so forth. Um, the shutter speed, the faster the shutter speed, the more frozen the image is. And the lower the shutter speed, um, the, the lower the shutter speed is the more blur the image will be. Now the ISO, focuses on the noise and how lit the photo is. Now in low light, use lower ISO. High light, which is going to give a lot of noise, is a high ISO, right? So all this takes is practice, especially when you go into off flash photography it's a bit more technical like when you want to have a photo shoot in the in the 
daylight daytime especially if you're having a 12 which is a very harsh time to do a photo shoot by the way um you have some cameras that are really good enough and you use high speed sync and what you do is actually overpower the sun we call it overpowering the sun All right um so any questions Um, so for I see a lot of a lot of um not a lot of but I've been watching um some YouTube videos about photography and photography challenges that um they're doing now and I see like they do long exposure shots so that would be the open up the shutter speed to allow more motion to be allow more motion to be captured, right? So they can see. So it's like, you know, when the cars are passing on the road and you have the streaks of the taillight, which is still capture like one um, subject, but everything else in the background is kind of like a streak, streak thing. Like, they call it um, a motion shot, I don't know. Could you explain that? All right, Kareem, you hit the nail on the head because that's a question I was going to ask to see if um, anyone was actually following or understood. Now, if you actually follow my Instagram page, um, db underscore photography 21, and you scroll down some more, you will actually see a long exposure shot. So as you spoke about car lights, that's the exact shot that you will see. Now, let me tell you what exactly I did. Now, I knew that for a long, ex and this has to be done um, on a tripod because any little camera shake, the camera will actually pick it up, right? So you take off the straps and you leave the camera on a tripod. It has to be still and it has to be there for a very long time. I left mine there for about a minute or two minutes. No, a minute. Right. So what I did, I knew that I wanted a long exposure shot. So I said, OK, there is some amount of blur that has to be in there. Right. And if I had a high shutter speed, the image would be frozen. So it had to be low. Right. But then when I look at it, I was like, oh, man. If I leave the shutter speed open for a very long time, a lot of light is actually going to enter the camera. So all you're going to see is white. No, I don't want that. So what could I do to compensate for that shot? I said, okay. I turned up the aperture to about F24. So it lowered the amount of light because the aperture at that high number, the lens would actually be smaller, right? So that's basically what the photographers did. And that's what, exactly what I did. The ISO I believe was about 200 to 400. As I said, that's like this, the sweet spot for my camera. Um, so yeah. That's basically it. You understand, Karim? Um, yeah, thank you. All right, sure. So any more questions? OK, so there's a question in the chat. I'll read it. And this is from Rache. How long did it take you to get used to all, the, to all those technicalities? Because it is taking me a while. <laughs> All right, so everyone has their own pace, you understand? And for me, photography is not my profession. My profession is actually nursing. However, it's my hobby, so I love it. But if you even go and follow my page, you can see my growth. So I started photography I like photography from 2013, but I actually started, started photography in 2017, in September. Now, up to this day, we are in 2021, 
I am still learning to master it all. So it will take a while. It takes persons who have photography as a profession a shorter time because, hey, they need to earn from it. So they are going to master it early, right? But for me, it's mostly a hobby and into a business. So I'm still learning, but it took me about two years to actually fully understand and know the sweet spot of the camera. So it's very important that you know your camera. Most definitely. And I have a follow-up question on that. Um, what are some cameras that you would suggest for us as, you know, beginners? All right. So my beginning camera, the camera I've begun with, it will, it's a Canon T6, right? But I believe a if you can start with a Canon T7i as a starter camera, it's fairly cheap. That would be nice. Um, for Nikon, I am not sure about Nikon, but Nikon actually takes some lovely pictures. Um, I think it's D3500. I'm not familiar with Nikon, but any Nikon camera in that region is actually a good camera. But for Canon, a good starter camera, no, would be like a T7i, as I said. But if you can afford it, um, uh, what should I say, a more expensive camera, you can always check out like the Canon, the Canon R, EOS R, you can check out the Canon Mark D5 um, and also Sony, lovely, lovely, lovely cameras. Right now I actually want a Sony camera for myself. <laughs> um, you can start out with a Sony Alpha 7 maybe. Okay, thank you. Sure, no problem. Any more questions? Guys, do you have any more questions? You could just hop on the mic quickly or type something real quick in the chat. All right. Um, I don't, usually in the live, you would normally have a two minute break or something for credit giveaway. I don't know. Definitely. If so I would, if there are no more questions for the photography aspect, I will hand over to you for a while because when we get back, we are going to get in the action of editing photographs. Okay, so I'm seeing a message. Please pardon that noise. I'm seeing a message in the chat from Tia Wright. Okay, so she's asking for the names of the cameras in the chat. Mm -hmm. So if they could be typed in the chat for her. Okay, and I see Karim helping her out with that. Okay, thank you so much. Karim. Okay, guys. So I'm trying to allow you guys to see me, but okay. Could you just indicate if you're seeing me? Yes. Okay, great. All right, guys. So. I hope you were all listening because as Demar said, I have some credits to give away because I know a lot of us owe digi have digi loans to repay. I don't know how, if low give out loans, tell me if they do in the chat, but I know that we, we all would like a little credit right now. So guys, get your phones ready. Get your phones out and try to get some phone card credit. Okay, so the first one is a Digicel credit, right? So all the Digicel users, get your phone ready. Dial the, the, the star one, two, one star. And I'm going to give you like one second. So, you know, the Jeopardy song. All right, guys, so you must have that though. No. So I will begin 
for the digital giveaway. One, two, six, four, eight, three, six, eight, eight, one, eight, four, eight. Pound key, go. If you got the credit, could you just indicate in the chat, please? Even if you're over on YouTube, just indicate in the chat if you got that. Sabrina is saying thanks. So I'm guessing Sabrina got it. You got it? Sabrina Davis. So I'm guessing Sabrina Davis got the phone card, the digital phone card. So kudos to you, Sabrina, actually saying yay. So you can repay your loan now. You're welcome. <laughs> so all the low, the line flow users, this is your time. So get your phones out, dial what you need to dial because this is your time. This is your time. So dial what you need to dial. I'll um, cue the Jeopardy sound again. Is it Jeopardy? Who knows? <laughs> okay, guys. So um, I'm sorry, hold on. Um, I'm sorry, I got to talk from you. Pardon me? I'm sorry, my internet is connected for me. Okay. Um, where are we now? So we're actually um, giving away phone card. So we just oh. gave away a digital credit and now we're giving away a line. So for okay, all thank people, you. no problem. For all the line users, are you guys ready? And I will begin. Eight, four, seven, four, Eight eight one five four three nine five four four pound key go. If you got it, please indicate in the chat here on Zoom or over on YouTube. Did any so Shakira got it? Woohoo! Go Shakira! Shakira Hutchinson. So she can repay her loan as well. You guys are so welcome. You're so beautiful. You are so beautiful. So um, Ash is actually asking a question for Damar. How do we clean a camera? And she's saying um, she did a shoot with some cars and dirt got on the camera. And the camera got pretty brown. Um, is it the inside of the camera or the outside of the camera? Meaning the lens on the inside. So mainly outside, but I think stuff got in the lens as well. All right, so I've never really gotten my camera dirty, but I normally have some solution that I use. Um, when you purchase a camera, you normally have lens solution to actually clean the lens, right? Now, I would normally use some of that solution and just wipe off the camera. Um, if not, if it doesn't work, you can try using a little bit of alcohol Please don't let the alcohol run inside the camera or anything, just a little bit. Um, but when you speak about inside now, especially if it goes to the shutters, the mirrors and the inside of a lens, um, you have to get it professionally done. You, I don't recommend that you do it on your own. Um, for me, I would never do that on my own. If something is wrong with the inside, if it's real dirty, mm -hmm. I have to find a technician, mm -hmm. the closest, and get it done. I am not going to try and mash up my own camera. <laughs> Most definitely, thank you for that response. And Ash is saying thanks as well. So guys, we're now going to do a little brain teaser. So you guys have been sitting, your mics have been muted, and you've been listening. You've been even taking notes because I know you guys are good like that. So now I'm going to invite one confident person to jump on the mic and tell me 
three tips that they have learned so far in taking pictures. So jump on your mic real quick and tell us. And don't be shy, guys. You don't know what's in store for you. Um, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Well, for me personally, I was really interested in the three elements of exposure because that's really what I wanted to learn. So I, I'm really interested in long exposure shots because I think they're really cool because they're really hard to get. Um, so I learned how to take, um, I learned to take how to, how to take long exposure shots. Um, and he really cleared up a lot of that stuff as it relates to shutter speed and how you can properly use IS to manipulate the camera and stuff like that. So I found those things very interesting. So, yeah. Thank you for that, Kareem. I, you guys, you can see Kareem and he's going with a mother side because you know he's here learning, taking his notes, trying to perfect the art so that he can start making, getting that bag, right? So big up to you, Kareem. Thanks for coming and telling us what you learned. Does anyone else want to try? Anyone else just jump on the mic real quick. Don't be shy. We're all a family here. So no one else, no one is coming. Or anyone over on YouTube, you can type in the chat what you've learned. So we're looking out for that, guys. Okay, so I have another thing that I would want to tease your brains with. So before our presenter had arrived or started presenting, we or I had introduced him. So guys, which person can come on the mic and tell me three fun facts about our presenter, Demar Brown? You don't know what's in store, guys, so come on. Jump on the mic and just share. You can be confident. All right, when you say fun facts, you mean like what you told us about him before? Oh, yes. Okay. Well, you're okay. Right. Um, what I remember is that uh, he has a bachelor's in nursing, and uh, he, I think, what was the other one? Like, he officially started photography in 2017, we, and he, and it's a hobby turned into a business. Okay. And, and that is... um, oh, sorry. Go yeah. ahead. Oh, I was saying that he started his business in September 2017. You know, he got into graphic designing when he was a before, I think, or 2013. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, he put it aside when he came to UA because he wanted to get into photography, even though he was the best graphic designer. So. Yeah. So Karim did not miss a beat. It was Tia Wright. It was, I believe it was Tia Wright. Yes, it was Tia Wright and Karim who came on to share those things. And we're so grateful because you're absolutely right. You're definitely right as if you had your ears right on the speaker when I was sharing. And we have Jordan in the chat. So I guess Jordan's a little shy, doesn't want to call on the mic. But he's saying he is a nurse but does photography as a hobby. He also really wants a Sony Alpha 7 camera. Love. <laughs> LOL. You are most definitely right, Jordan. That is absolutely right. So guys, as I said, we have been here four days now. Day one, we had a little session teaching us how to take quality pictures using our phones or smartphones. Day two, we had a session where we learned editing or beginners editing using Adobe Lightroom. Day three, we had a makeup artist, a professional makeup artist come and show us the, you know, the the nooks and crannies of applying makeup properly. And I thought that that was so important because, guys, sometimes we see some 
photos, some professionally done photos, and you're like, wow, that makeup does not look nice. <laughs> so guys, I'm hoping that you will definitely apply these skills that you are learning. So this morning or this afternoon rather, Damar has taught us so many technical things. At one point I was like, wow, is this physics? <laughs> when I started seeing numbers, but he has taught us um, some technical things regarding photography that I definitely hope that we took some notes and we will apply as we try to, you know, extend our knowledge in photography. Tomorrow, I will just express this to you now. Tomorrow, we were supposed to have, tomorrow, we were supposed to have someone, I will, hold on one minute. So tomorrow we were supposed to have Chanel come and present. However, she was unfortunately diagnosed with coronavirus, with the coronavirus. So instead we'll be having Nicara, we'll be having Nicara Crooks and he will be presenting in her place. So I'm looking forward to seeing you guys. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys tomorrow, same time, same place as we, same time, same place as we learn some more about photography. Okay, guys, so I will, I think we, you know, had enough time to get a bottle mm -hmm. of water, right? We're not over, we're not over at all. We're just, we're, we're just at the midpoint, guys. So I just wanted, you know, you guys to, you know, I don't know, maybe your cushion was getting a little flat so you could fluff it. Maybe your throat was getting a little dry, your eyes were getting a little tired. And you know, um, since we're in this virtual space, it's important for us to ensure that we're practicing proper ergonomics. You know, the, the device isn't close to our face um, and our eyes aren't, aren't straining and all things like that. So I just provided you guys with a little intermission type of thing. But now I will hand over to Damar as he can continue his presentation now teaching us how to edit on Lightroom, Adobe Lightroom. So Damar, over to you again. All right, thank you so much once more. Definitely. All right, so I will share my screen again. There. All right, you guys see my screen? Yes, we are. All right, Adobe Lightroom. What do you think Adobe Lightroom is? Anyone, someone, any takers? Uh, I okay. it off. Someone's in the chat. Um, Ash said photo and a photo enhancement software and Jordan said it's similar to Photoshop. All right, that's good. All right, so when it comes to Adobe Lightroom, so just like other photo editing app or software, Adobe Lightroom includes a subset of Photoshop's features that are custom tailored to the contemporary photographer, all right? So now what this really means is that a lot of the tools that are used in Adobe Photoshop are used also in Lightroom. However, when it comes to photo manipulation in terms of cutting out image, Put, put subject A on subject B and subject B and subject A. Yeah, that's all Photoshop. Lightroom just covers the photograph itself, how it looks and helps to edit the theme of the photograph. So whether it's cool or whether it's warm and so, so forth, right? So Lightroom covers most of the image manipulation tools you will mostly most likely need, right? So unlike Adobe Photoshop, Lightroom is non-destructive photo editor, meaning that you don't have to worry 
about hitting save button. As a matter of fact, Lightroom doesn't even have a save button. All you do is export. So the photo will always remain in the Lightroom catalog in which it is saved to or your workspace, right? So as I said, Lightroom is non-destructive. So you can always go back. Let's say I took a photograph last year. I edited it, but I improved on my editing skills. I can go back for that photograph that I took last year, which was already edited. I can reset the edit on it, and then I apply my new edit. So that's basically what non-destructive mean. You will always have it in Photoshop now, from you save it, that's it. Unless you have to start all over or you use a clipping tool, but this is not a Photoshop session. <laughs> I will not go into Photoshop. I love Photoshop, but yeah. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to be in between this screen and my workspace, right? So we are going to remove minor skin blemishes or a little distraction in the background, right? So this is very important. Now, first of all, I must thank Kifa and uh, Alia. They did a wonderful presentation and photography and also the introduction to Lightroom because now we are actually going to incorporate everything, right? And Alia, of course, is Lightroom. So she had already touched on the topic. So I will just go over it and seal the deal. <laughs> Get me? All right. So step one, I went ahead and circled this spot healing tool, right? So it's located beside the crop tool, which is here, or you can simply press Q on your keyboard, the letter Q, right? Then you can select the clone or the heal, right? Now step two, adjust the brush size as small as possible to cover the spot mole, wrinkle, etc., that you would want to remove. Step three, select an area with the mouse and Lightroom will automatically locate an area. Sorry, this should be area. It thinks the area should look like, right? So, as I said, it's going to be automatic. However, if you don't necessarily like the area, you can choose an area for yourself. All right, so we are going to go in it. All right, so the first photograph I have right here, this is a basic image, not yet. Um, edited or anything. None of my images are edited as yet, right? So this is Maya um, history. She was in Miss Medside pageant. So I was the photographer for the pageant. I sponsored it and so forth. All right, so I'm just doing all of this talking so that you guys could actually take the time and actually go into Lightroom. So I believe you guys are in now. So step one, all right. This area right here, yes, it's not the skin, but I want this area to be gone. And also if you look on your skin, you see some white specks, right? So what you want to do is to zoom in more on the area. All right, so we don't necessarily want that right here. So what you're going to do, you press, you press the spot removal tool 
or press Q. Right now, we're going to choose clone. Right, we're going to choose both of them and see which one gives the better edit. Right, because sometimes the clone is better in some instances, and sometimes the heal is better in some instances. Right, so. We're going to adjust our size. That's about it. And just click. Now, as you can see, it selects an area right here, All right? and it's gone. So after you do that, press done. But when you do that and you go back at it, right? You realize like right here is too sharp. What else you can do? So you want to press command Z and undo that. And you're going to, and editing is about trial and error i forgot to mention it it's all about trial and error and what you feel as a photographer all right so you go back again heal try to heal click And you see right here, it's more, it's much smoother. Can't tell. All right. You can go down to these little spots, zoom in on them. Go back to the spots, remove all. You can try clone again this time. and then click right here again and click. And that's it basically. And yeah, you would want to go on and on, but I just want you guys to try that. Well, I hope you have been trying it with me. Um, also important, you always want to do some amount of spot healing before you actually start smooth, softening the skin. So all I'm doing right here is just covering a few areas. No matter how small it is, All right, so it's a little bit better because I don't have that big light reflecting. All right, so any questions? Oh, and you learned about the presets and stuff like this. I don't necessarily use presets. It's actually good. They can be downloaded but I like to edit my photo from scratch. I don't want anyone editing it for me. And a lot of the times I actually do like Photoshop. I actually love Photoshop. So a lot of the times um, Lightroom for me, it's a bit limited in what exactly I want to get done for the photo. So I would normally save the photo then transport it into um, Adobe Photoshop, and then I finish my edits, 
All right, so I'm just putting that out there. So any questions? Not seeing any questions in the chat, but guys, if you have any questions, you can just indicate now in the chat or jump on the mic real quick. It seems that there are no questions. All right, no problem. So we're just going to jump back into the PowerPoint. So the next thing we are going to look at is how to remove distracting objects, all right? All right, so step one, crop the image as best as possible. This will make your job a lot easier, thus making the workload easier. Keep in mind the rule of third. Now I'm going to show you that uh, when you actually go back into Lightroom. Step two, if image does not seem straight, you can easily rotate or select angle, then draw a line on the straightest edge if seen. All right, so again, you can click crop right here, it's circled. And if you want to straighten it, you can either rotate the image or you can click angle and draw a straight line on the straightest edge, noted. Now, after that step three, you want to follow the same steps above for removal of blemishes slash spots that was taught earlier in the previous slide. Now, we are going to pause on this for a while. Now, remember initially, in the first part of this session, we spoke about the subject, the lighting, the visualization, and the composition. Now, Kifo on Monday spoke on composition and the negative space, so forth. And Alia sealed the deal on Tuesday with the rule of third, which is very important. Now, remember I was speaking about composition. If you have a poorly composed shot, a lot more work has to be done, right? But if you have a excellent composed shot, you have less work on your hands. So I'm just going to show you an example. All right, so I'm going to show you two photographs, right? We're basically going to do one of the two. So this photograph, this is straight from the camera, right? Well, all of these images straight from the camera, but this photograph to me is well composed, excluding the car in the background. I couldn't do anything about it, sorry about that, <laughs> but this photograph is balanced. However, for a poorly composed shot, this is what happens. Now the light strobe is not supposed to be in a shot. I don't know what I was thinking, but it actually worked out for this session to show you an example of how I overcome this situation, right? So, we are going to get into it now. So we're going to go to the crop tool. Now remember, we spoke about the rule of third, very important, right? So you don't want the light strobe in the background, in the image, sorry. So you want to crop around that as best as possible, all right? So you come to one edge and what I normally do is hold on shift 
So it actually, you know, has a ratio. So I drag it, drag it, drag it, drag it. Don't rotate it, don't rotate. All right. And I try to fit the image inside. All right. So we think about the rule of third right now. I think that's fine enough. What do you think? Think that's fine? All right, so our head is mostly to that side. The core, Demar, yes? We have someone in the chat asking, what exactly does the rule of third mean? I don't know if we got an in-depth explanation. All right, so the rule of third is basically proportions right proportions of the shot so with the rule of third you don't want one aspect of the photo to be what should i say to one side so let's say the tree wasn't here right Roseanne would just be and Roseanne is a previous um, commuters representative on the guild council. Um, if the tree wasn't here, she would only be in this third and this and just her leg. So it won't be it won't be equal then. You would have to put her in the center of the image. Right, let's say the tree wasn't there. So I don't know if that kind of explanation was better. Yes, yeah, she said she said she understands now and she's expressing thanks. All right, sure, no problem. So remember, I was talking about the composition of a shot. Now, a poorly composed shot, like what I did right here, don't know what I was thinking. This is what you have to do to try to get out the light strobe and so forth. All right, so I think that's okay enough. So what I'm going to do is press done. So I'm done cropping. All right, Whew. a lot of work, right? <laughs> Um, so afterwards now, you're going to proceed to step three. Now step three is what we did earlier with the blemish remover, right? So you're going to click on this spot removal, clone, then you go over the image you want the mouse to be as small as possible over the image. And then you just drag a line. I find it better when you actually do it half and half. You don't stretch the line long because it will get um, a different sample from somewhere else and it might interfere with the overall look. All right, and then I come again All right, now if you zoom in right here, you're actually going to see a bit of the tree, right? So I don't want that right there. So remember, you move around to the desi desired effect. All right, so you see right here what I was talking about when it's too long, now you don't have enough space. And right here, it's showing that you're getting a piece of the road. So I want to undo that right, control Z, and I go again. All right.
you can click done and we can also try the heel the heel will actually work better right here but i'm just showing you the difference All right, so there we go. Yes, it might look away when it's well zoomed in, but also if you use Photoshop, which I say I use mostly, um, I could smooth around this some more. Also, what you could do is to feather it a bit more, you know, feather it a bit more so you can have a little smooth around the edges. All right. So that's it. So what you can do, you can always click the what slash is this now? The backward slash, and it will give you the before and after. All right, or you can actually click on this right here, and it gives you the different views as well. All right. So that's it for that, basically. Um, we're going to move on. And uh, the last thing I have here is how to soften skin and more. So first of all, step one, you want to se select the adjustment brush or you can simply click K on your keyboard. Now this is the adjustment brush. Step two, select custom, then search for soften skin or any other task you want to get done. Now custom would be right here beside the effect. So you would click on it and then it says to choose soften skin. Now you actually have other tasks that can be done such as burn, which means to darken a section of the photograph in which you highlight. Um, you have dodge to lighten, you have the iris enhance, you know, to make your iris a bit whiter. Um, you have the softened skin and also you have teeth whitening. So we are going to go ahead and soften the skin. And we are just going to play around with like the iris enhancement as well, right? To show the difference just for fun. Um, so step three, you're going to brush over the skin or area that needs adjusting. And step four, you want to adjust the clarity bar or any other bar involved in editing to prevent the subject or person from looking fake. 
or like plastic. You ever see some photographs like the, the, per, the person just look fake, like it's too soft. Yeah, I like a little realistic touch in it. So I don't get rid of all the blemishes and so forth. All right. So we are going to go over into the last photograph I'm going to go through. Well, second to last, because we are going to edit a photo together. All right, so right here, you have Damien, right? No, sorry, it's Brandon, my bad. Um, I went ahead and just did a little edit to it, not much. You know, I turned up the clarity a bit, let the image sharper. So as you can see, this is before This is before, and this is a bit after, all right? So I'm actually going to delete the skin softening that I started. So we want to go in the adjustment brush. I started to soften the skin, so I'm just going to delete that. And I'm going to delete the iris. As I said, I'm going to go through some of them. All right, so if you zoom up, you know, you see some amount of spots and so forth, all right? Now, all right, you know what? I'm going to start the image from scratch. So we're going to do the spot healing too. All right. So we have some blemish here. We want to click over that, click over that, click, 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 click. And all you do, you just remove the blemishes until you feel comfortable. Let's go to the right side of his face, or should I actually say the left side of his face? But it's on our right. And also, you see this area right here where his hair just look out. You can just go over that and select an area, and that strand of hair is gone. Also here, and remember you always want to make the brush as small as possible over, over the area. All right, so that's enough for now. So we're just going to do a quick edit of this photo, right? So you click done and you realize his face is okay now. So in Lightroom, this is one of the first things that I do. I know what I'm looking for, but I'm going to choose, I'm going to select auto. Now Lightroom gives you an edit, right? what the photo should look like or has a possibility of looking like it, right? So I click auto. All right, so auto, I'm not feeling it, all right? So command Z, back. So I go into the photo myself and all you do is take it bar by bar. Now it looks a bit lit, so I'm not going to trouble the exposure a lot. I'm just going to maybe carry it to a little bit, like 0 0.20, right? I'm going to do the contrast. And please, if you don't see the difference, don't be afraid to go all the way left 
and all the way right. Now, you just select wherever you feel pleased. All right, I'm thinking about mm, right there, it's fine. Highlight, turn down, turn up. I think the highlight is a bit good right here. Shadows. Too much shadow. Working with that. White balance, whites. Then you move on to the black. I'm just going all the way so I can show you guys the difference, all right? I actually think that yeah, that is good. Um, so the clarity makes you smooth and is very dramatic. <laughs> All right, sometimes I use this depending on the feel for the photo. So as I said, you're going to visualize the photo and say like, wow, I could do apply this edit to it when I am actually editing and stuff like that. But we, are, we aren't going for that right now, any dramatic effect. So clarity, it actually sharpens the image a little bit. So I'm going to put it like right here, the vibrance. Now, when you turn on the vibrance and the saturation, you have less color, right? And when you turn them up, more color. So I'm actually going to stick with it about here. And the saturation, I think it's okay right here. So a little before and after. Before and after. All right, so you can scroll down some more and you can play along with this curve or just use these, these bars as well, anyone you feel comfortable with. Thinking the highlight's good right there, light. So I'm thinking the light is actually good at zero the darks. And the shadows. Alright, now you can use you can use the orange, mostly for the skin, because you can see it's a bit orange. And you can play around with that. So that is red. This is on orange. So you click orange. And you don't want to really mess around. When it comes to the skin, you don't want to mess around with the hue, right? With the orange. What you can play around with is the luminance, meaning how lit it is, and the saturation, all right? See that? way too orange. So you just want to put it around here. Not too much. And that is way too light, too much light and way too dark. So I think it's good around here, not too much. So now again, before and after. All right, so we're moving on to what we actually intended to do. So we want to zoom up a bit more. I think that's fine enough. Zoom in a bit more. Then we go to the adjustment brush. Right here, you would actually see custom. You would click on that, and then we're going to soften the skin. 
Now, when we select softened skin, we will actually see the adjustment bars that were actually used to create this effect. So now, as you can see, you have the clarity and the sharpness, which we spoke about, all right? So you can zoom in a bit more. I like to work with it, zoom in and then zoom out. So. Demar, a question. Someone is asking, what is the shortcut you used for before and after? Um, backward slash. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. All right, so. What I normally do is just go over the wrinkles, you know, back and forth. Ensure that those are covered. And then I don't necessarily like to get rid of all the wrinkles. So that's me. Also to note where you're painting, right? With the brush, you can Click this right here, show selected mask overlay, and it shows you where exactly you went before, right? So we are actually going to select that and we're just going to paint. Paint all over. And when it goes close to the edges, you want to um, make the brush smaller so it's you have more control over it. All right, so edges. And you see like right here where you actually have part of the, um, the here, you can select, select um, Alt or Option. I actually have a MacBook, so I actually have Option on it. So I select Option. And then you will see a negative sign come right here. So to the negative sign, it actually deselects the area. All right, so you can make it smaller. And I actually use a mouse, not the trackpad. So I can just, if your mouse have, has a ball, you can just roll it upward to increase and downwards to decrease the size. All right, so that's good. So I can come again, paint, paint, adjust the size, paint. Um, you don't want to necessarily um, cover the hair because that will make the image a bit blurry. You want to keep some area sharp. So you always want to try and keep the eyebrows, the eyes, um, and also some aspect of the nose, right? And you want to keep the lips area sharp as possible, right? So you're just going to smooth right here. So all you do is just paint. And to always track what you are doing, you can always deselect and you can see the difference. All right, you can see the difference with here from here. All right, just continue.
I mean, if you want to ask any questions while I'm just painting, you can do so. Feel free. But I do have a segment afterwards where we just ask any question, whether it be photography or actually Lightroom. I don't normally tend to um, brush the ears. Why? Because I find out that when you take a photograph of a person, a portrait, um, the, the ears will already be a, bl a lot blurred. So you don't necessarily need to chop the ears because that will already make the image a bit more fake than expected. All right. So I just do that. Zoom out. And I basically covered a lot. Um, you can also cap, um, paint over his neck. I mean, some persons actually like to get rid of all the wrinkles and to best do that, it would be in Photoshop, but I don't necessarily like to get rid of all the wrinkles. I like to have a natural touch to it. And for the, the parts that you didn't want to paint, as I said before, you can always select option and adjust the size of the brush. And then you just go over that side, like here. All right, so. Yeah, so maybe this is not as perfect, but this pretty much shows you everything. All right, so we're going to deselect it right now. And you see the difference. All right, so you see I need to do a bit more right here. So I just go all the way up as best as possible. Stuff. All right, so here is it. So this was, you can scroll down and you select this to see the difference, right? So instead of doing the entire image like this, with the before image and that, you can actually scroll down. And as long as it's in the adjustment brush area, you can select this, turn on brush adjustments and you see the adjusted area. So it's off, right? So when you look at this now, it's a bit fake when it's on. So remember what I said, you actually, that's what right here. All right, now it's gone. All right, so you can see the brush, the bars that were intricate in this maneuver, right? So. I want to play around with it a bit more. So turn up the clarity a bit more. So you don't want to go all the way, right? But you have it blurred about this. So I believe this is way better at negative 46. I believe it's way better than at 100. It looks really fake like that. So what you want to do is to just play around with it and carry it to a good enough number where it looks natural, All right? So you can see, you can, you have a little more, you have some wrinkles at his neck, 
and you can see a little in his forehead, right? So I believe that's good for me. Now, after doing that, you click done. What else I'm going to show you is just for the eyes, for example. So his eyes are a bit yellow. So you go again and adjustment brush. Right here, you would click and then you say, okay. If he was smiling, I would show you how to whiten his teeth, but he's not smiling. So iris enhance, right? So you click on that right there. And then you know that the bars involved is actually the saturation, the exposure, and also the clarity, right? So we go in, adjust the brush, and we paint. Oh, selecting right here, and we paint. So don't be alarmed if it actually goes out of the area you want. You can always deselect it, as I was saying earlier. All right, so I'm just going to do one eye to show you the difference, all right? All right, so you want to zoom in a little more, all right. So you realize that the brush actually came onto the skin and you don't necessarily want that, all right? So you just pull out our option, as I said before, adjust the brush size and all you do is just paint where the excess is or the spill is. All right, so I'm going to deselect. And you can see it's a little lighter. You can also go ahead and turn up the exposure a bit more, but you don't want it to be very exposed because that's just going to look fake, real fake. So you want to turn it down a little bit. So more like that. And if you zoom out, click done, you can actually see a difference right here. This eye is a bit whiter and that one is a bit yellowish, right? So we can always go back and click on the brush that we used and we can adjust it a bit more if it looks a little fake. And then we're good to go again. So now you basically use the same setting for the other iris. So the excess, get rid of the excess. That's good, All right? And some persons, it's mostly done in Photoshop though, but for some persons, like when they're changing the color of their dress, color of their jacket, their shoes, whatever, they can normally paint over um, the, the apparel, whatever it is, right? And uh, what they do is actually come right here for color. I'm going to deselect this so it shows, right? So you come here for color and you can select your color. So you can see it has a bit of blue in it right now. It has some green yellow, red, and so forth. And what they do is just turn up the saturation or turn it down and it shows more, but you don't want that.
and uh, that's basically it so this is the before this is the after i'm going to show you side by side all right so i i left this image right here so you could do on your own because we don't have much time but i mean i want you to try this image on your own this is if not the best image i have taken since um since i started photography in the sense that i moved on to off flash photography i learned how to um overpower the the sun with the high sync right with the off camera flash the high sync speed and yeah so i gave you this photo so you can practice on it it's really an amazing photo as i said all right if you just look at this photo you don't have much edit to it right um the photo is good as is you can make it a bit lighter and stuff and just to show you um some more of the tools so brush I want to show you lighting tool, the dodge tool. Um, increase the size. Turn on the feather a little bit and the flow. And just to show you that it actually works. So you can see it's actually getting lighter at that aspect. All right, so you just want to have a spot on light lit area so you can see the difference if you don't want to light the entire background all right and you can always play around with what you like you can select the greens you know play around with the greens you know just to see the difference can always play around with it. Go to yellows. So I'm just doing a really quick edit right here. So the highlight. And this is beauty about about capturing an image in raw, raw mode. When you come into Lightroom, you have more things to do because with raw, the image is, what should I say? It's not compressed. So with raw, you basically get back everything that you captured and you can set it anyhow. But when it's it goes straight to JPEG, you have less options in editing because the image is already compressed the camera does the editing for you basically right so Just turn it vibrant a little bit. Oh, that's actually nice. Or you can come like this, doesn't matter. So that's just a quick edit. You know, you can go in some more and can go on her face. Let's say I don't necessarily like the light right here. You can go spot healing. Let me try to heal right now. And you just paint over that area. Right, you just click that area. You know, it selects that area for you. Click right here. No, 
And as I said before, you would always do the spot healing. So you'd want to remove the spots on our face. And makeup, guys, makeup actually helps. So I, th I believe it's Nikkei. I hope I didn't mispronounce her name. In her video yesterday, speaking about makeup, so forth, um, you guys should actually have makeup. If you do have makeup, it actually makes the job a lot easier. So we don't have to, you know, spend the time softening the skin more and stuff like that. So this is just a quick edit. As I said, I'm not spending any time. So I gave you one of my favorite photos to actually practice. And remember, this is Rosan. This was Commuters Rep 2018-2019. We served on the Guild together. Um, I don't necessarily like this one, so I can just move it around some more. Uh, all right, I don't like this one, so I'm going to actually delete that one. And then maybe I use a clone. See if I can get another area. All right, no, that's worse. <laughs> that's actually taking it from all the way here. No, you don't want that. I will stay with the heel. Can turn on the feather. All right, so, and that's basically it. So you have the before and the after. All you need to do is just export. So with all that said, any questions whatsoever, whether it be photography or editing, Guys, you can just hop in the chat and type your questions or come on the mic and voice your questions. The floor is open now. Okay, so there's one question from Rashi. How long does it take you to edit a photo? All right, so if you are going to think of Lightroom, in Lightroom, it may take me five to 10 minutes, depending on how much detail I pay attention to. But if I actually want to spend the time and edit a photo, so I would spend like 10 minutes in Lightroom and then I go over into Photoshop where it will take me about um, another 10 to 15 minutes. So in all, maybe 25 to 30 minutes in a in-depth edit. But for just a regular edit, it may take me just five to eight minutes. Okay. Any more questions, guys? This is the moment. So Tamika is asking, what Photoshop app do you use? I actually use Photoshop 2018 on the MacBook Pro. Okay. And I don't have I, any. You You're don't, saying? I mean, you don't necessarily have to get a MacBook to do the edits per se. It can be done on any laptop, but with the MacBook, I just think that it has a better graphic to me and also you can use gaming laptops or if you have windows surface windows surface is amazing i tell you i got the opportunity to use it once and it's way better all right but i personally i have a macbook 
and it's it's pretty good. To me, it's it's better than the Windows, um, such as the HP and other brands, right? But that's just my personal preference. And Shanique is expressing that she can't afford a Mac. So if you have any recommendations for an Android. Um, as in an Android phone? Or you mean Windows? I'm guessing a Windows laptop. Oh, yeah, man. Um, there's, all right. So in any, in any application, the software engineer always um, take into consideration that there are two platforms, the iOS and also the Windows. So just like having a Photoshop, Adobe Photoshop for Mac, you actually have Adobe Photoshop for Windows as well. And the same thing with the rest of the Adobe suite. So all you have to do is to go online, search for it, and you can download it, purchase it, whatever. Or you have a friend that actually has it, you ask them for it, you know, and that's it, basically. And is that the same for Chromebooks? Yes, it's the same for Chromebooks. Okay. Um, Shanique is asking if you have any free Photoshop app suggestions. Free Photoshop app suggestions? Right. Um, I'm not really sure. I can't answer that question. Free Photoshop app suggestions. No, I'm not sure. Okay. If, maybe she could, maybe she could follow my page, whether it be the personal or my photography page and inbox me or anyone can actually do that. And we can talk further on it. Yes. Okay, most definitely. So I'm seeing Abigail in the chat. She says for mobile, you have Photoshop Express. Okay, so I guess that's for mobile, for our smartphones. Okay. And you actually have, you actually have um, Lightroom on the phone as well. I personally have Lightroom. So before Corona, um, I would normally do events right and one of the one of the things that i place in my packages um, is actually live uploads because the camera that i have um, the it has the wi-fi feature on it so what i do i link it to my phone and then while taking picture i send a few pictures straight to my phone i use the lightroom app while there in the event and I do a quick edit of some of the photos and then post them live. So yes, you do have um, Lightroom on the phone as well. Okay. And I'm guessing there are no more questions. Does anyone have any more questions? All right, so. Um, Annalise had asked earlier, let me see if I can find it. Oh, she said, um, if you would like further guidance, guidance with learning the skills of Photoshop and Lightroom, are you available for counseling? Um, yes, like, all right. One of the things I love to teach, I love to teach, I love to help persons because I know what it feels like to not have the knowledge, right? Um, I always have to say this, I have a friend, I want to big him up. His name is Shane McHugh. When we were in high school, he was the one that actually, he was designing from grade seven. Now he's the one that started in the whole Photoshop thing. And then he taught me how to use Photoshop. And then from that, I just learned that I keep on teaching. So when I even came to UA Mona, right? Yeah, I know that I was a very good graphic designer, but I didn't necessarily do much graphics then, right? Um, but there was this person, I'm going to call his name because he's one of my many students, um, Elton Daly. Now, Elton is, is 
an amazing person, right? Um, he was the PCC for the Guild last year, Mona Campus. Um, he is very talented. He could draw and stuff like that, paint, I believe, but he wasn't exposed to Photoshop and photo manipulation and also illustration, right? So I, along with others, right, we helped to mold him and, you know, put him on a path and say, all right, we give him task, which he must complete. And I mean, right now, Elton Daly is one of the best graphic designers I've ever met. I think he's even better than me because I have stopped designing for about um, three, four years now. Yes, and he's really good. And he was one of the presenters last year, I believe, at the commuters presentation. So with that being said, sure, I'm willing to guide you in every step of the way as best as possible. And we do appreciate that. So I'm not seeing any more questions in the chat. All right, so I guess that, that's all, folks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Rache is um, wondering if you would do that for free. For free? Um, sure, I would. Uh, I would. Uh, all right, if I say for free, everyone is going to bombard me, <laughs> right? <laughs> but I am willing to actually help. I will guide you, as I said, as best as possible. Um, yeah, I would do it. I would do it. I would just have to have the time for everyone, but I would do it. Okay, and they are definitely expressing gratitude in the chat. Um, this was a wonderful presentation, Damar, and on behalf of the Publications Committee, from the commuters and everyone present, I would just like to thank you for such an in-depth, um, fantastic presentation where we really can attest to learning some crazy things we didn't even consider, you know, as normal people taking random pictures. So <laughs> thank you so much for being here. It was a beautiful presentation. And I know I, as, as well as everyone here, learned so much. All right. Thank you so much, Sherry. Thank you for having me. Thank you to the entire Commuters PCC team. Thank you. So, guys, I don't know if you thought that the, the two um, phone cards that we gave away were the only ones, but they weren't. So, guys, get your phones ready as I'm about to give away one more for Flow and one more for Digicel. So guys, starting with Digicel. I hope your phone is ready. Star one, two, one, star. Six, six, nine, eight, seven, three, four, nine, eight, one, six, two, one. Pound key send. So you can just indicate in the chat over on YouTube or here if you got it. So Renisha got it, Renisha Ashton, yay, go Renisha. So we love that for you. Now guys, for the flow users, get your phones ready. I hope your phones are ready. Star one, two, one, star. Eight, six, seven, seven, one, eight, one, eight, five, five, seven, two, seven, seven. Number sign, sent. So just indicate if you received it. So Ashley Brown got it. Woohoo! Ashley has been here from Monday. <laughs> so congrats to you, Ashley. But I have I have one more, but I want to tease you guys or tease your knowledge, see how well you were listening, what notes you took, or what you retained. So guys. 
I want one flow user to hop on the mic and tell me um, what the rule of third means. So explain that phrase. So be confident, hop on the mic and tell me a flow user. So no flow user is going to hop on the mic and express to me the, the meaning or you guys are shy. Okay, so what about digital users? Just hop on the mic and explain the rule of third. Okay then, so maybe you don't know. Okay, so the image must be centered essentially. <laughs> and that is from Rache. Damar, do you think she deserves it? Um, maybe add a bit more to it. All right, I'd like to try it. Okay. So, yeah, the foreground, mid-ground, and background, you don't want one of the three to take up most of the space. So you want to center everything so that each part essentially has the same proportion while it's focused on the fixed object in the center of the... Yeah, in the center. Damar, what do you say? I think that's a reasonable answer. Okay, so... Anthony, I believe, just message me privately and let me know if you're a flow user or a digital user. Or you don't have to message me privately. Yeah, I'm a flow. Okay. So we have one more for digital users, right? So you can just jump on the mic. I saw Renisha. Let me look. I saw Renisha responded. Faith, she responded. And Rashe. So you guys, you didn't get the last one, but let's try to get this one, right? So what could you use on Lightroom to remove something from a picture? So there's an object in a picture that you don't necessarily want. So how could you remove it? Someone jump on the mic and tell me a digital user, please. One brave soul, just jump on the mic and tell me how you would remove an object from an image using Adobe Lightroom, of course. Okay, so Faith is saying healing. So Faith says healing and Abigail says she knows it, but she has a flow phone, oh my gosh. You missed it by the skin of your teeth. <laughs> So I am going to give that one to Faith. So Faith, you can just let me know if you are, uh, no, okay, I know that you are a digital user. <laughs> so thank you guys for coming out. This was a really good program. Um, I really enjoyed learning more about Adobe Lightroom. I thought I had enough um, the second day, but today I learned so much more. It's, it, it, the, as Demar said, the knowledge never ends. It's an ongoing thing. So guys, even after um, or five days, I hope that you really continue to learn more about photography and, you know, the ins and outs. Faith is saying she really enjoyed this session. Thank you, Faith, for coming. Thank you, Rashi, for coming. Um, um, let me just big up some of you guys because I'm seeing some of you every single day. I don't know how you manage class and all, but wow. Um, Renisha, Rache, Ashley, Abigail, Tamika, um, Kareem, all of you guys. I'm just so grateful for having you. Thank you so much. Big up to the Commuters Publications Committee for hosting this event. This is so meaningful as we are all trying to, you know, go where the money resides. So thank you guys so much for hosting for hosting this event so that we can, you know, learn how to be better 
um, photographers, whether we want to um, venture into it as a business or just perfect our skills for our um, gain or personal gain. So guys, thank you once more. On behalf of the Publications Committee, I thank you all for coming, making the time um, to be here from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and now it's Thursday and you're still here. I'm very much grateful. So guys, as said before, we were supposed to have um, or present or present all. We were supposed to have Chenille, but unfortunately she has the coronavirus. So now we'll have Nicara Coke presenting tomorrow. So guys, I crave your presence tomorrow at one same place we'll be sending the link emailing you guys so please don't be shy come out again the final day so you know big things gonna happen big things gonna give away and all that great stuff so i'm looking forward to seeing you all much love and respect don't forget to follow our pages ua commuters ua commuters pcc um follow all the presenters so that you can tag them in your creations at the end of our training sessions guys and also don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel so you can watch all our previous events and all our upcoming events guys so thank you i am your host sherry campbell it was a pleasure being here with you all i'm grateful that you all came out and i'm looking forward to seeing you again those who um won the last um set of phone cards please message me now so that i can give them to you thank you guys for coming and i'm looking forward to seeing you tomorrow bye